the work ethic ingrained into humanity since the Industrial Revolution has been the idea of the work ethic. What does that mean? On the one hand, it could mean doing the best you can in the works you create. And this is a true ethic. Deliberately producing less than your best, as in planned obsolescence, is a defraud, unethical. On the other hand, it could mean that one should devote one's life to working, adding one's energy, irrespective of whether one likes what one does for the slave tokens called money or not. Never mind what you love to do. Get a job. Any job. If you don't, you don't have the work ethic. In this sense, the work ethic is a slave's creed, devised to keep us applying for jobs, filling a corporate need so it can profit. Not an ethic at all. The idea of the work ethic in the function of a slave's creed, with its promise that if you just work hard, you will succeed, serves the ones who would use your energy to their profit. Rarely do the ones who plug their energy in throughout their lives succeed, with most leaving this realm with just enough to manage daily needs, not with anything that could be called success. But surely the ones who used your energy have profited? Maybe not from just your energy alone, but from the aggregate of the many employed used. On top of that, most jobs today are there to move the bulk of our planet's wealth to very few here. One percent own statistically all of the wealth here, with just enough floating around in the economy to keep it going. Cashiers, sales, accounting, collections, advertising, marketing, insurance, Wall Street and banking are the main job areas that move the wealth upward, adding nothing to the benefit of humanity. There are others, no doubt. Because of this, rather than speaking of a work ethic, I speak of a betterment ethic, making things better by virtue of doing one's best in all one chooses to do, in all one's works. The foundation that creates the slavery on our planet is the accounting for our human energy added into the system that moves the wealth of our planet to so few. Money. Statistically, all of us are wage slaves. The best slaves, after all, are those who do not know they are slaves, who think they are free. One aspect of money, in all its forms, from trade and barter on up to electronic bits, is that it will promote psychopaths to power. They will do literally anything to get and keep the power over others that money provides. Considering that the wealth the 1% own could feed, clothe, house, and otherwise provide for all of us many times over, and yet they do nothing for humanity, we can conclude that indeed they are psychopaths as predicted. Given they are psychopaths and that the average psychopath lusts after power over others, enjoys toying with others, loves faking others out, even thrilling to create misery for others, we might conclude that they enjoy their power over us, that they toy with us, that they create fake news and other fakeries, and even work to increase our misery here. 
we might have a motive to remove the only tool to power they have. Without money, without accounting for energy we add into a system slash community, all psychopaths become no more and no less powerful than anyone else. There is nothing to pay strong arms and armies with. Without money, we will be motivated to do our best for the social currency we receive, accounted for in our hearts and minds. Respect, reputation, appreciation, fame, adoration, love, admiration, and other social currencies. Without money, and with robots and AI to do necessary work no one wants to do, we are free to do what we do want to do. No universal basic income to pull our strings by to keep us in line. Without money, all goods and services will be freely available for the thanks and other social currencies we offer. Without money, ownership of land beyond that which we live on and use becomes irrelevant. Why own a building you never visit or land you never see? Without money, we can associate with only the ones we like and love. No irritating co-workers, obnoxious bosses, frustrating underlings, annoying customers. Without money, we can spend time with our families, learning together, traveling together, exploring together, socializing together. Without money, no one can monopolize truth. No one has the power to indoctrinate, propagandize, and lie on a widespread basis. Without money, no artificial scarcities will arise, presently promoted by profit motives. Without money, there will be no poverty. We all may live as richly as we choose. The vast richness of our planet will be returned to us, stolen as it was centuries ago. See my video called Trusts. Without money, the bulk of the waste we see will cease, as planned obsolescence vanishes. Food no longer spoils because it is not sold, and other waste created by profit motive. Without money, we will be judged by the contributions we make, not the quantity of slave tokens we have acquired. Without money, you are not a resource to be used, employed by others, but can be resourceful in and of yourself. Without money, we can come together with common visions and create solutions, betterment, and attain our goals unhindered by whether we can afford them or not. Without money, we will no longer be the slaves of the psychopaths. Add the three laws of ethics, which we all may solve for breaches of, the betterment ethic, and governance by reporting and solving for problems via the web, and we will have peace, prosperity, fulfillment of our potential, attainment of our dreams, owning our time and energy. We will once again have ownership of our planet. We will be free. Please share the playlist offered on my channel, which includes the blueprint, details on various aspects, thoughts on the social engineering we see, and more. 
when enough of us are consenting to the foundation and doing what we can to build it, we will create better for humanity here on our planet. Amaterasu Solar, Shill for Humanity. Love Always. Humanity will win.